Hello, greetings, and welcome to a special Top 15 video taking a look at the best Marlon mods of 2022. Uh, this is actually part one of a two-part series, uh, covering, specifically, uh, the best mods released from Morrowind between January and June of 2022. Uh, there were over 1,300 new mods released from Morrowind in 2022, and it just, it simply isn't possible to cover all the highlights in just one Top 15 video. Maybe in a top 50, but then we'd be here all day. But uh, anyway, with that said, uh, we're going to take a look at the absolute best graphics, gameplay, and content mods of the first half of 2022. We have a lot of ground to cover, so, you know, let's just, let's hop right to it. Uh, and of course, uh, you can find uh, down links, as well as notes on compatibility, major mod conflicts, and requirements for each mod just right down below. Uh, you'll also find links to various modding guides and my own personal list of graphics mods just uh, down there as well. So, with all that out of the way, let's start with number 15. Uh, we have the Town Expansion mod, Amazing But More Expansion by Ulu Will. One of the largest city expansion mods to be released in 2022, Amazing But More Expansion is absolutely massive, adding 67 new buildings to the city of Omora. A city which in the vanilla game already had some 40 buildings to start with, bringing the total size of Amora to uh, roughly uh, 10 times the size of Solitude in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. And uh, yes, th that is just a bit of a shot fired, but let's face it, the city sizes in Skyrim were just a bit silly, weren't they? But uh, anyway, uh, this has been just a busy year for town overhauls and expansions, yet not the least of which for Bomora. But Amazing Bomora expansion is the only one to keep a largely just uh, vanilla-ish style, expanding the city up into the hills uh, surrounding this major trade city, with lots of new districts just taking advantage of this added verticality. With dozens of new shops, taverns, factions, and NPC residences, uh, Bomora uh, now just, it truly feels like a major urban setting. And uh, there's even a few new quests for you to do here, uh, with about a, uh, just a, about a half dozen new side quests. And a new player home for you to buy for the mere cost of 25,000 gold. Uh, there is just, there is quite a bit to see here, including an expansion to the fishing village of La Ode. And uh, not only is this one of the largest city expansion mods of 2022, it's one of the largest in the last decade, with a fantastic design that both manages to uh, largely stay true to the vanilla game and uh, give you that just that epic big city feeling that you might crave. Uh, all that makes this just a worthy contender for our top 15 list. But uh, quickly moving on, we have number 14. A trio of mods that improve Morrowind's dated combat gameplay, including PvP by Archiemag, a Combat Enhanced MWC Edition, and a Bleeding Injuries MWC, at both by Spammer. Morrowind's combat gameplay has just a lot of issues, and I, I, I don't think very many people would disagree with that statement. Uh, there have been many attempts over the years to rectify this, but as it so happens, uh, this particular combination of mods, uh, all which are compatible and work with one another, just happens to be one of the, the best visceral overhauls of Morrowind's combat gameplay released to date. In particular, a PvP combat overhaul adds a lot more movement to combat. Enemies will dance around, uh, trying to dodge your attacks and land blows where you're not defending. They'll try to dodge ranged weapons and spells, and uh, they'll have faster attacks. One of the main issues in Vanilla Morrowind is that a lot of combat basically amounted to standing still and whacking each other. There wasn't much movement, and consequently, there wasn't much excitement. And at this, this tries to rectify that. With PvP combat, a movement is a must. If you don't move, you die. Uh, there's also some new parry mechanics. Uh, you can stagger an opponent by attacking them mid-swing knocking them back and giving you an opportunity to land a blow. Uh, but of course, uh, they can do the same to you, and uh, you'll need to be just a little more strategic about when you strike. Look for an opening, and then attack. Combat Enhanced NWC, on the other hand, is a modernization of the original Combat Enhanced, a mod that adds combos for you to unlock for each type of weapon. 
Uh, Morrowind allows you to make directional attacks like chop, thrust, and slash. And now, by combining those types of attacks in a particular order, uh, you can unlock combos and special moves, including disarming an opponent, knocking them down, or even dismembering them by chopping off their head, or slicing off their hands. And uh, to add to this visceral feeling of this fast-paced combat, uh, bleeding injuries will coat your opponents, their weapons, your weapon, and yourself in bloody gore, giving visual indications of the injuries that you're both dealing out and receiving. Uh, there's nothing quite so satisfying as landing a series of successive blows and then bathing in the blood of your enemies. With these three mods combined, Morrowind's combat is a whole new experience, at one both more dangerous and more exciting uh, than it ever was in the vanilla game. Uh, next up, for uh, number 13, uh, we have the City of Roll mod, uh, Delera Saran by Delera 1000. A uh, simply massive and gorgeous visual overhaul and expansion to the City of Saran, uh, Delera Saran is one of the latest mods by Delera 1000, just overhauling the settlement Samara Wind, uh, giving them a more distinctive visual flair. Uh, we previously showcased Delera Bomora as part of our top 15 mods of 2021, and Delera Saran just uh, continues that tradition. Uh, giving the so-called Jewel of the Ascadian Isles a major makeover that more befits a major trading town, with lots and lots of that uh, unique and distinctive visual flair that just serves to enhance the, the, the you know, the sort of the tourist aspect of Saran, a, a city that is both a major hub for services and also a major waypoint for pilgrims. Uh, notably, the vanilla city of Saran was a, a fairly plain Lalu town in the vanilla game, uh, with notably no residences to speak of, aside from the manor of the Lalu Lord. Uh, this utter and absolute uh, transformation uh, both gives a greater visual element of a thriving market town to the city of Saran, uh, as well as expands it with a few new buildings, uh, including uh, one or two residences and uh, also actual functional docks, uh, which were strangely missing in the vanilla game. Uh, you know, despite the fact that uh, Saran uh, is just uh, directly accessible by sea. And uh, not only that, uh, more importantly, it, it is a major trading hub. Like, I, I, I don't know why there weren't docks here before, but hey, they're here now, and uh, that's a huge improvement. Uh, there's also just a lot of new scenic verticality that's been uh, that's been incorporated into the design here, and uh, the city of Saran now looks like a thriving market town with outdoor vendors and balcony dining, just offering a uh, splendid views of the Ascadian Isles, uh, all of which uh, simply makes it one of the larger and more transformative city overhauls to be released in 2022. But, uh, moving on to something just a bit different, uh, for number 12 we have the gameplay mod, The Buying Game by Vitruvian Wall. Uh, the mercantile skills in Vanilla Morrowind are honestly just a bit broken, and uh, they don't really affect the game all that much. It, it's rather a useless stat to invest skill points in in the vanilla game. Uh, but with The Buying Game, uh, that is no longer the case. Uh, for this mod is an absolute overhaul of the mercantile skill, giving it new functionality and adding perks for you to unlock as you gradually improve your mercantile stats. Uh, now the mercantile skill actually serves a purpose, uh, for if you have a low mercantile skill, uh, you won't even be able to tell how much something is worth. With a low mercantile skill, uh, when you look at an item, uh, there is no base value listed on the tooltip. Uh, you'll just have to take what you can get for it from a merchant, and just, you know, take their word that they're not completely screwing you over. At a higher mercantile skills, uh, you can finally see the base value for items, and uh, also get better deals from specialized merchants, like uh, selling and buying weapons and armor to a smith, or buying or selling potions to an alchemist. At uh, the highest mercantile skills, uh, you'll be able to take advantage of regional pricing, uh, some goods are in high demand in certain regions, and in low demand in others, allowing you to travel and buy low and sell high. Eventually, uh, you can even invest in shops, uh, doubling their inventory and uh, their available bartering gold, 
and it gained the ability to barter with every NPC in the game, at buying anything and everything that they own, uh, even the clothes that they're currently wearing. Uh, there's just, uh, there is a dozen other features in this mod, from making the economy more difficult and balancing the trade system, uh, to changes to illicit trade. Uh, this is, uh, this is one of the biggest and most advanced overhauls of Morrowind's trading mechanics in years. And uh, all that uh, makes it a more than worthy addition to our top 15 list here. Uh, coming up on number 11 though, uh, we have the item mod Drip, Dynamic Randomized Item Properties by Merlord. Uh, quite possibly just uh, the biggest item mod ever made for Morrowind, uh, Drip adds a Diablo 2 style loot system to Morrowind with over a million, that's million, uniquely enchanted items for you to come across during your adventures. Uh, basically, uh, like with Diablo 2, uh, this works by adding prefixes and suffixes to items, uh, resulting in unique enchantments or just, uh, you know, uh, other little improvements. Uh, so, uh, with this mod, uh, you might come across the Long Blade of Self-Repair, a weapon that just automatically repairs with use. Uh, or uh, you might stumble upon the Ferocious Silver Dagger, that has 1.25 times the damage of a normal Silver Dagger. Uh, or uh, you may discover the Astral Helmet of Mears, which has both a Reflect Enchantment and a Chameleon Enchantment. But uh, what makes Drip just particularly interesting though is that it is an MWC mod. Uh, so it doesn't actually add any new items to the game, but rather modifies items in-game, in real time, just every time you enter a new cell. A, a regular Iron Helmet uh, might become a Crimson Iron Helmet with a Resist Fire Enchantment, uh, or a regular pair of expensive shoes uh, might become Shoes of the Nightplay with Fortify Sneak Enchantments. Uh, the mod just simply modifies items on the fly, uh, with no actual changes made to any level list or any containers, uh, making it just uh, compatible with every other item and loot mod out there. It is, uh, it is hard to overstate just how much this improves the looting experience. Instead of coming across the same handful of items just all the time, uh, now there's a bit more variety with unique enchanted effects, uh, some of which may prove to be quite useful, and uh, some are just, uh, you know, comparatively more rare, uh, making their discovery just all the more exciting. And uh, when you combine this with Danae's Drip Depot, uh, which just expands uh, Drip support to just dozens of other item and loot mods, uh, you'll never run out of new things to find uh, when you're looting through dungeons or pilfering through homes, with just millions and millions of new possibilities. And uh, with a mod config that includes plenty of modularity for just how often you run into these newly enchanted items, uh, there is just uh, there is simply no reason to ever play without it. it. It is both a unique and simple but remarkable mod that makes looting just all the more fun. Uh, coming in at number 10 is the quest and faction mod Fighters Guild Improved by Flynn Sunset. Now, uh, unlike in the later games, and you know, particularly Oblivion, uh, in Vanilla Morrowind, uh, the Fighters Guild are not the good guys. Uh, they're depicted as a slightly more, uh, morally complicated faction. I mean, obviously, you know, they are a mercenary company, but uh, there's some underlying corruption uh, going on with the Kimona Tong, and a number of the quests they are given are based on just on rather questionable grounds. But, unfortunately, as with many things in the Vanilla game, uh, Bethesda didn't really explore the themes of the Fighters Guild as much as they could. And uh, that's where Fighters Guild Improved steps in. For this questing overhaul expands upon the conflicts inherent within and without the Fighters Guild, adding additional context to quests and new options for completing them. Uh, in particular, Fighters Guild Improved expands upon the Konotong's influence in the Fighters Guild, and how they're using the Fighters Guild in a shadow war with the Thieves Guild. A, a number of the quests have been redone from scratch, uh, turning otherwise boring bounty quests into far more meaningful narrative adventures with choices and consequences. And uh, the conflict between various branches of the Fighters Guild, uh, those working with the Kimono Tong and those that aren't, has been more fully expanded upon. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a pretty massive overhaul for the Fighters Guild, and uh, one that stays true to the vanilla game maintaining a lore-friendly redesign of quests that simply expands upon what was already there in the vanilla game. And it is, uh, without question, uh, just one of the best overhauls uh, currently available for the Fighters Guild. 
And if you've ever just wanted to experience the Fighters Guild with just a bit more, you know, a bit more nuance and a bit more narrative and more complicated moral choices, uh, this is, you know, this is absolutely the mod for you. But uh, next up, we have number 9, the Town Overhaul and Expansion mod for more Waterworks by Indo-UK. Another major city overhaul and expansion for the capital of Great House Law, Lugon Vardenfell, for more Waterworks focuses on specifically overhauling and reinvigorating the city's canal district, widening the canal with the Odai River, adding market stands, and also just adding a wee bit of verticality adding that element of depth and height to the canals, along with a lower level of residences, warehouses, and sewers. Uh, far from the dull, uninspired canals of an Elmarwind, uh, the canals are now just a vibrant, multi-level district at the heart of Amora, with lots of lovely detailing from river skiffs and boats to bits of clutter, cargo cranes, and uh, notably, bridges that have actual guardrails. So, you know, uh, NPCs won't just randomly fall into the Odai River, which they did all the time in the vanilla game. And not only does this expand Bomora's Canal District, but it also adds a massive series of waterworks and sewers just underneath the streets of Bomora, uh, utilizing a new tile set created by Indo-Ugek, with lots of new and unique encounters for you to discover down in this damp darkness, including new ways to get around and it potentially gain access to a variety of shops and residences. A, a, just a great way for a would-be thief to move around the city. Plainly put, uh, this is just uh, this is one of the best town expansions released in 2022, and a major enhancement uh, for Bomora. Uh, though notably, uh, it, it does conflict with amazing Bomora expansion. So unfortunately, uh, you do have to decide uh, which one you want. Uh, you can't choose both. But, uh, anyway though, uh, let's move on to number 8, the landscape overhaul, Spines of Madness by Mao Bogotrol. A glorious transformation of verticality for Morrowind's northernmost region, the Spines of Madness is a landscape overhaul for the Shugorad region, uh, giving this area a distinct look with massive pillars of stone and giant mushrooms, uh, creating just an utterly scenic vista of vertical beauty for as far as the eye can see. Uh, to say the least, this is a huge, huge visual improvement over the vanilla game, uh, which, uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, didn't really have a unique visual look for the Shugorad region. Uh, indeed, in a vanilla Morrowind, the Shugorad was little more than a carbon copy of the Azura's Coast, with only the high concentration of Duma Ruins really allowing it to stand out. But and now, and now there is no questioning the unique appearance of this northern region, as these giant pillars of stone, uh, reminiscent of massive spines, have not only altered the landscape of the Shulgorad, uh, but they've made the region just uh, feel like an entirely new experience, with new hidden sites to discover and treasures to loot. Uh, now, this isn't the first time that we've showcased one of Malbogatrol's mods in our top 15 lists. Uh, you may recall that we showcased Malbogatrol's Rocky West Gash uh, back in our Top 15 Mons of 2021, another just beautiful verticality-inducing transformation of one of Morrowind's vanilla regions, and a mod that, uh, quite obviously, you know, works particularly well when paired with this one. Uh, there have been many, many landscape overhauls for the Shugorad over the years, but uh, Spines of Madness manages to maintain an almost vanilla-friendly look and feel while still making this region feel unique. And along with Malbogatrol's other landscape mods, I, I, I can safely say that I strongly, strongly recommend it. Now, jumping to number 7, uh, we have the NPC mod Repopulated Morrowind by Grumbling Vomit. Morrowind is a big place, with numerous towns and cities. But often, uh, the population of those towns and cities can feel just, uh, just a bit small as if they're ghost towns instead of these major places of industry, trade, and commerce. Over the years, uh, many mods have tried to rectify this by adding in random NPCs across the game world of Morrowind, populating and diversifying encounters in both cities and across the land writ large. And a repopulated Morrowind is the latest mod to attempt this, at doing so in a rather unique fashion. 
Uh, the goals of this mod are to dynamically add NPCs all around Morrowind, uh, including animated NPCs, uh, all of which utilize content from Tamriel data and Ob data to make them feel just a bit more unique. With both named NPCs and generic NPCs, they'll encounter both in cities uh, and out in the wilderness. Uh, but, uh, unlike previous mods in this genre, every populated Morrowind uh, focuses on uh, specifically providing more NPCs that fit each location. Uh, so you'll encounter more Dunmer in Dunmiri cities, more Nords in Solstein and Dagenfell, and uh, more Outlanders at Imperial towns and forts. Uh, Morrowind is a hostile place after all. Uh, you'd expect most of the population to be native Dunmer, not Outlanders from somewhere else. And uh, one of the great features here is that Repopulated Morrowind uses unique styles of dress, headwear, and armor for each vanilla location. Uh, so, uh, for example, uh, if you're an Aldrun, uh, the people you'll see just wandering around will uh, visually look distinct uh, from the people walking around in Balmora or in Mournhold, with the new NPCs at each of these cities having distinct clothing and styles that you'd expect, you know, given their environments, cultures, and customs. With support for nearly every major mod out there, including Terry Built, Beautiful Cities of Morrowind, and uh, much, much more, and a lore-friendly design philosophy, that not to mention uh, thousands of unique NPCs, just ensuring that no two games will look exactly alike, uh, this, is, uh, this is one of the best random NPC mods out there populating both cities and the wilds. Uh, there, is, uh, there is far too many features here for us to cover in a Top 15 video, but uh, suffice to say, if you're looking to make the cities of Morrowind feel more alive, uh, this is just, this is a simply fantastic mod that is absolutely worthy of checking out for yourself. Uh, next up, at uh, number 6, uh, we have two mods, uh, the Immersion and Location Overhaul mods, Ob Shipwrecks by Corsair83, and Get Wrecked, Shipwreck Overhaul by Sarah Bulan. Uh, now, uh, both of those mods, as you might imagine, are overhauls for the Shipwrecks of Morrowind. Uh, the first one uh, replaces the shipwrecks entirely, uh, utilizing new assets from Ob Data to instead just break each shipwreck open, uh, pouring their contents out into the exterior world space, uh, getting rid of the interiors entirely, and giving each shipwreck just a unique visual look. Uh, while the other one uh, focuses on the shipwreck interiors, uh, overhauling every interior to make each shipwreck feel like a, just a unique location, with lots of cluttering and detailing, again, uh, just utilizing Ob Data. Uh, not to mention, lots of new loot to actually make, you know, visiting these shipwrecks uh, more worthwhile. Uh, both mods are uh, quite simply just fantastic at what they do. But, as you might expect, you know, given that they do overhaul the same shipwrecks in just completely different ways, uh, that they will, they will have just a bit of a conflict. Uh, honestly, you know, the timing here is a bit ridiculous. Uh, the shipwrecks of Morrowind have been uh, some of the most disappointing and lackluster locations in the vanilla game for years. And until 2022, 20 years after Morrowind's release, uh, there wasn't a single mod that actually tried to overhaul them. And then, in the span of two weeks, we get two of them with very, very different design philosophies. Uh, both of these mods are just excellent additions to the game, vastly improving these locations, giving them a unique visual flair with atmosphere and detail. But, uh, due to their nature, uh, you can only choose one. Ob Shipwrecks is perhaps the more visually stunning, allowing you to not only see the ships torn apart, uh, but allowing you to swim or walk just uh, right through them, with some new encounters for you to discover. Uh, Get Wrecked, uh, on the other hand, has some beautifully creepy dark and atmospheric interiors, with lots of new loot to entice you to carefully explore these wonderfully detailed environments. Uh, whichever mod you choose, uh, they both deserve to be on this list, and it really says something about the community that a part of the game that has been neglected by modders for over 20 years uh, managed to get not one, but two major overhauls in such a short span of time. Uh, the Morrowind modding community really is just at the height of a new golden age. But uh, coming in at number 5, uh, we have the modder's resource, the crafting framework by Merlord. Uh, now, uh, normally we don't really showcase a lot of modder's resources in these top 15 lists, but uh, what the crafting framework does is nothing short of a revolution. 
for it gives modders, for the first time, just an easy to use crafting framework, a complete with visual flair and fancy UI graphics, uh, that they can then take and use in their own mods. And no need for fancy scripting, no need for advanced programming, just take the framework, adjust a few variables for the items you want the player to be able to craft, what the skill requirements are and what crafting materials need to be used, and pretty much, bing bam, you've got a crafting system. Uh, virtually anyone with even a modicum of modding experience can now add fully-fledged crafting systems to their mods with relative ease. At this, at this has been a dream for Morrowind for years. Uh, old modding projects like the old Morrowind crafting mod attempted to achieve makeshift crafting systems using at uh, just the very limited scripting language of the vanilla game. But at long last, uh, here is a perfect framework for achieving actual crafting mechanics in Morrowind. And uh, already, uh, quite a few mods uh, use this framework, like the legendary survival mod Ashfall with Ashfall's bushcrafting system, uh, Relic Crafting, a mod released for the 2022 Modathon competition, and a Necrocraft, the first real necromancy mod from Morrowind, that allows you to raise and control the dead, uh, which we'll be seeing more of uh, here in a moment. Uh, because this is a modder's resource, you know, there's not a huge amount to see here, at, at, at least not without using other mods. But the potential here that this resource creates is just, is simply massive for the community. And uh, yet more evidence that the Morrowind modding community has achieved a new golden age. And uh, all that just makes it a worthy contender for the number 5 slot in our top 15 list. Moving on to number 4, uh, we have two landscape and dungeon mods with Balaku the Lonely Towers by Kalantu, and Tales from the Ashlands, the Great Hive of Bad Beneath by the Hive Mind. A team of modders composed of Random Pal, Seenloth, Vegetto, Pikachu no TM, and Lucivar. Inspired by the concept art of Michael Kirkbride, uh, these two mods add a set of scenic and verticality inducing landmarks to the northern Ashlands with the towers of Balaku specifically overhauling just at much of the landscape of the northeastern Ashlands, adding cliffs, paths, small treasures for you to discover, and of course the twin landmarks of the Balaku towers themselves, which guard the entrance to the Great Hive of Ban Banath. And uh, yes, uh, these two mods are meant to be played together, and in fact uh, they are designed uh, to complement one another. Uh, not only that, but uh, both of these mods add new quests to the game, uh, dealing with just some of the lore surrounding these particularly unique landmarks and the local Ashlander tribes. But in addition to new quests and landmarks, the Great Hive of Bad Benef also adds a gorgeous, verticality-inducing, and a fairly sizable new dungeon uh, for you to find inside the hive itself. The atmospheric beauty of this dungeon, and... Uh, really just both of these location mods, is uh, honestly just nothing short of astonishing. And uh, they manage to fit in just uh, perfectly well with that alien feel that a Morrowind has. Like the Hive of Bad Benef and the Towers of Blocku could have just easily been locations from the vanilla game. Uh, they fit in uh, just that well. And with new content for you to experience, some amazing dungeon delves courtesy of the master of dungeon design, Sir Seenloth, and of course, lots and lots of verticality, uh, this is a pair of mods that you should absolutely just experience for yourself. And uh, they are definitely just well deserving of the number 4 position in our top 15 list. Now, uh, finally, uh, coming up to the top 3, uh, we have in the number 3 position, uh, the dungeon mod of Eggs and Dwarves, Nissus Egg Mine, and Bethlehem's Overhaul by Seelof and Greatness 7. By far and away one of the largest dungeon mods released in 2022, uh, Seelof has released a major overhaul for uh, arguably the most prominent egg mine in Vanilla Morrowind, the Nissus Egg Mine, as well as an overhaul for the Dwemer Ruin uh, contained within. This simply gorgeous and atmospheric overhaul uses the Quama Egg Mine tile set from Oak Data to just uh, to completely recreate the Nissus Egg Mine, uh, transforming it from a once planned set of caverns to a truly unique dungeon environment, with lots of verticality, tons of immersive detailing, uh, and, of course, a large number of those strangely organic Quama Egg Nests that the miners here harvest for their precious, precious eggs one of Morrowind's primary sources and exports of food. 
And not only is this just a massive overhaul and expansion to the egg mine and Dwimmer Ruin here, but uh, there's also a new quest for you to go on. For this mine is troubled by deep, dark rumblings from down below, shaking that only gets more and more intense the further down you dwell. Uh, this is accompanied by just a simply fantastic shaking effect, a uh, complete with dust and rubble being knocked loose from the ceiling, uh, providing you with a truly unique, immersive, and memorable experience. It's, uh, it's hard to overstate just how amazing this overhaul is. It is, without question, uh, just an absolute must-have mod in my book. And uh, really, just uh, the, the same goes for every mod by Seamoth. Uh, there's a reason why I call him the community's Dungeon Master, or a Dungeon Daddy for fun. For each and every dungeon he has created is just an absolute gem, full of verticality with massive expansive interiors, dark corridors, and hidden perilous depths, just for treasure should you, you know, take your time to carefully explore each of these dungeon environments. Of Eggs and Dwarves is just another fine addition to that legacy, and uh, I would argue it deserves a tie with our other top three mods here. But uh, moving on to our penultimate mod, uh, we have number two, the Quest and Faction mod Astrologians Guild by Billy Fighter. A new faction mod from Morrowind, uh, the Astrologians Guild provides you with a new series of adventures with a new magical themed faction with a particular interest in the Dwemer, their technologies, and their ruins. Over the course of a new quest line, uh, which includes a couple dozen new quests, uh, you'll help the Astrologians Guild uh, build up their ranks, explore new Dwemer ruins and new dungeons, visit new planes and new realms, discover failed Tavani experiments and expeditions, and uh, much, much more. Astrologians Guild was one of the largest quest mods released in 2022, and uh, without question, it is, it is simply one of the best, not just of 2022, but of the last decade. Offering you a fully playable new faction with hours and hours of new content, exciting unique adventures with some simply fantastic scripted effects. And like a mage casting a spell to raise a Dwemer Ruin just straight out of the swamp, while you're forced to face off against a Daedric Invasion from Oblivion. Uh, to even a limited amount of voice acting, a courtesy of real voice actors. Uh, you know, since this was released before the advent of Eleven Lambs AI. Everything about Astrologian's skill just oozes quality, a and it is honestly, it is just honestly so rare for us to get a just a fully new faction mod like this. A new faction mods with just tons of quests uh, happen maybe once every couple of years, and uh, mods of this caliber are just are very rare indeed. Uh, honestly, you know, this harkens back to the classic quest mods of Morrowind's first golden age. Mods like the Illuminated Daughter, Scourge of the Frostbringer, and Scourge of the Lich Father. Only with the polish, more lore-friendly, and quality touches of, you know, of the modern age of Morrowind modding. Billy Fighter is just is an incredibly talented mod author, with a number of amazing quest mod releases. But I, I, I think this, I, I think this is easily his best mod, and, and one that has become just a permanent part of my save game. A again, you know, I think all these top three mods are just our mod of the year material. Uh, there is simply no question that this deserves to be at the top of our list here. But uh, we finally come to number one, the best mod of the first half of 2022. And uh, that's the gameplay, crafting, and quest mod, Necrocraft, a comprehensive necromancy gameplay and quest mod by Vitruvian Guo. Uh, now, this might seem like just a bit of an odd choice for our top position, uh, given just the number of high quality mods that we've already seen. But there's a very, very good reason for why I've chosen this as the best mod of the first half of 2022. And uh, that's because this adds an entirely functional, seamlessly integrated new gameplay system for necromancy allowing you to not only raise the undead, but to prepare corpses, craft various undead minions, and literally use the dead bodies of your enemies to raise your own legion of the dead. A legion that will obey your every command, allowing you to sally forth and bring the world to its knees! <laughs> and uh, all this uh, comes with new crafting mechanics, new skills for you to learn and develop, new spells used in various necromancy rituals, and a tons of quests involving your fellow necromancers, including a number of famous NPCs that were previously just hostile enemies, like Gorus the Maggot King and Sorkville the Raven. 
Uh, there's even just entire new quest lines here, uh, where you can just learn the ropes of your fledgling skill and necromancy, and gradually develop the power to summon and raise ever more powerful undead constructs. From bone lords to bone spiders to bone walkers, zombies, skeletons, and all the rest. And uh, even, eventually, uh, learn how to become a lich. Uh, there have been many, many mods over the years that have tried to add necromancy gameplay mechanics to Morrowind like Affligatee's Plasmus Revenants. But a Necrocraft is, is the first mod to truly add necromancy just so seamlessly, like a natural part of the game, with easy to use crafting mechanics just allowing you to finally live out your fantasy of role-playing as an evil necromancer. Combined with all the new questing content, uh, there is just, there is simply no doubt in my mind that Necrocraft deserves to be considered, if not necessarily the absolute best mod of 2022, just uh, certainly just one of the best gameplay mods and an amazing addition to the game. But uh, with our top 15 list out of the way, I, I do have just a few honorable mentions. Uh, the first of which is for the Town Overhaul mods, Bomora and Seed and Lean, uh, both by the Inwars and Mushrooms team. And uh, yes, uh, for those of you keeping score at home, uh, this is the third, count third, Bomora City Overhaul mod to be featured in this single Top 15 list. And uh, yes, uh, there were also Bomora City Overhauls released in our Top 15 mods of 2021 video, so, you know, what can I say? Uh, Bomora is a popular city that is just popular with mortars, and a lot of those city overhauls are, you know, actually pretty good, uh, even if they do, or and just inevitably conflict with one another. But uh, anyway, uh, this is actually two mods, uh, two city overhauls that covered two of Morrowind's most iconic cities, uh, Cedanine and Bomora, uh, overhauling both to be more atmospheric, detailed, cluttered, with just some very minor expansions to these two settlements. In the case of Bomora, uh, there's just uh, there's a lot of new details to make each district of the city feel more distinct with a more fleshed-out market plaza, including new outdoor market stands, a more decorative upper town with walls uh, surrounding the district and a statue of the city's founder, a slightly expanded canal district with a small docking platform, and uh, also some new bridges that have actual guardrails. Uh, so, you know, uh, NPCs won't just fall into the Odai River. And uh, the labor town has been remade to, to, just, uh, to just be a little more dense, with more detritus, graffiti, and clutter to make it clear that this is the poor district of the city. Uh, there's a couple of new buildings in Bomora, uh, plus a few new apartments. And in the case of Cedanin, uh, there's again just been a lot of new clutter. Uh, some atmospheric lighting with lampposts and the like, a bit of lovely landscaping around the village itself with a few minor cliffs, some new flora and decorative rocks, and an expansion to the city with a barracks and tower. You know, so the Imperial Guards actually have a place to sleep. Uh, not to mention just uh, one or two new shacks. Uh, both of these overhauls are just incredibly atmospheric and immersive. And uh, while mod conflicts are just are going to be inevitable, uh, they're both just definitely worthy of an honorable mention in our top 15 list. Uh, on to our last and final honorable mention, uh, we have the Items and Quests mod in Ronin by Lucidace. One of the best new armor and weapon sets released from Morrowind in 2022, Ronin adds a new quest for you to discover and a new set of Ronin armor for you to find, including a new weapon. Based on the Endor armor from the vanilla game, uh, the Ronin armor set is found on the corpse of a rogue ordinator. And... And to say the least, it, it is, it is just a really cool looking set of armor. It has an interesting mix of styles between the vanilla Endora armor and a kind of just a, a kind of samurai type vibe that is, uh, that is insanely good looking. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of detail in the armor itself with that moon and star symbol and uh, some Dunmiri script. And it also comes with uh, some new clothing, uh, with a shirt, pants and skirt. At this, at this might well just be the smallest mod on today's top 15 list. But I, I really just, I wanted to give it an honorable mention because it is, it is really just such a great looking set of armor. It, it blends in pretty well with the rest of the armor in the vanilla game. Uh, but of course, uh, that's, uh, that's all there is to see here really, so uh, that's just, uh, that's just our final honorable mention. And uh, that's our top 15 list. 
At to say the least, 2022 was just an amazing year, and arguably the best year for Morrowind modding on record. Uh, we still have another top 15 list coming out later this month for the second half of 2022. But every mod here, every mod is well worth checking out, and uh, they all deserve your attention. Uh, there is not a single bad mod on this list. But uh, anyway, uh, as always, uh, down links along with links to various modding guides and graphics lists uh, can just be found right down below. And uh, real quick, you know, I, I would just like to take a moment to thank our patrons, including Aesthetic J Mac, uh, Area 5, Slash Zombo Mean, Billy Fighter, Kiwi, Cyprinius, Danae, Deliant, Danina, Dennis418, Exovian, Yame, Alcazo Castor now, Julian, Corridor, Langastir, Lord Brinney, Macbone, Melchior Dog, Moorlord, Michael, Mr. The Josh Man, Not Cascade, Old Navy Twitchit, Opera Jack, Porkays, Apoyoholo, Raven Talon, Arfuso, Rissaleaf, Sand Gentleman, Shadow Bash Wine, Shooter, Soka Cat, Stiff Kitten, Ed Telvani with a thousand nicknames, Two Time and Trauma Root, Tyra Rain, Voot Tot, and Xero Fox. If you'd like to join them, uh, check out rewards, including early access, behind-the-scenes content, and access to polls to, uh, you know, decide what kind of content we showcase, uh, visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash Thanks for watching, and uh, as always, stay safe, stay healthy, happy modding, uh, and I'll just, I'll uh, see you all next time.